I uh, welcome all the speakers of this panel and I welcome all the audience members. Thank you so much for being with us uh, for this event today. This is the third edition of the Indo-German Research Day. Uh, my name is Adarshri Jamkirtkar and I'm the head of the programs of the German Center for Research and Innovation at the DAAD Regional Office here in New Delhi. And uh, I will be your moderator for this panel. So. Thanks a lot for your interest. Once again, uh, in the last editions of this event, we looked at um, different players in research in Germany and India. Um, we looked at individual funding programs for mobility of researchers between both the countries and also at research projects and how can you get into cooperation with, with fellow researchers from both the countries. What can you expect today? You will hear from the four speakers who are representing four key funding organizations from India and Germany, and we will get insights into funding strategies, portfolio of their institutions, and how they are um, collectively driving the Indo-German research cooperation. We will also talk about challenges um, that arise in funding of research projects year on year, um, what we can look into the future, and uh, also can gain a little bit insight into the trends at the moment. Um, and we will also see um, how things are going to shape the funding research the research funding landscape as there's a global shift happening in terms of uh, funding as well. If you have questions for the speakers of this panel, please type them down in the chat option. Um, if you also have comments and inputs, you're also welcome to put them down in the chat and I will take them up during the session or at the end of the session where we have some time dedicated for the question and answers. If you would like to know more about the individual funding schemes that are offered by these institutions, we have uh, the interactive sessions uh, organized today at the event. We already finished one slot. There's a next slot uh, offered uh, after we finish this panel where representatives of these institutions uh, will be there to answer all your questions. Now, let me not keep you away from the main content of the panel and introduce to you the, the four speakers. You may see that we have, uh, I keep mentioning four speakers, we have fourth speaker who is uh, running a little bit late as he's stuck in a, in a ministerial meeting. We will be joined by him shortly, but I will nevertheless introduce him uh, right away. So we have with here uh, Christian Strova, who's the head of the Knowledge and Divisions Networks Division at the German Academic Exchange Service in Bonn, our head office. His responsibilities include the AD's network of overseas offices, the International DAD Academy, EDA, and the Center for International Academic Cooperation, also known as KILI. Prior to this, he was the head of the section for scholarship programs, Asia and the Pacific. His international experiences also include teaching positions at the Dublin City University and the University College of London. And he was also the deputy director of the DAD office uh, in London. Thank you very much, Mr. Strova, for taking our time. Um, I have here next Dr. Lalita PV who's the Chief Scientific Officer of the Indo-German Science and Technology Center, known as the IGSTC. Um, she designs and promotes IGSTC's Indo-German collaborations and programs. Before joining the IGSTC, she was Grants Manager at the Wellcome Trust, uh, DBD Alliance India, um, doing science grants, science and grants management. And before moving to science administration, she has 16 plus years of PhD, post-PhD research experience in diverse fields in many countries, and has been also awarded independent grants by the DSC in India and the National Research Council in the United States. Thank you so much, Dr. Lalita Pivi, for joining this session. I have here Dr. Francisca Langer next, who represents uh, the DFG and is the head of, director and the head of the DFG office in India. She's responsible for the collaboration at DFG for collaboration between Germany and South Asian countries um, and Vietnam, Thailand, and Southeast Asia. Starting in July 2022, she is the remote director of the DFT office in New Delhi, but um, she often travels to India. She's been active in science management, uh, science management since 2012 and has also worked in the United States uh, in the DFT office of New York. Thank you very much, Dr. Langer, for being here. I will also introduce our fourth speaker who will join us shortly. Uh, Dr. Rajiv Kumar, uh, who's a scientist F and senior director, international cooperation at the Department of Science and Technology uh, of the Ministry of Science and Technology in India. He has 20 years plus of experience in planning, management, and coordination um, related to India's science and technology, bilateral cooperation, 
particularly with Germany, France, Finland, Italy, Denmark, um, Republic of Korea, and uh, several Central Asian countries. He has also worked uh, in the areas of um, powder, metallurgy, new materials, and has uh, advanced experience there. Um, we will uh, talk to him shortly. Now, uh, I would like to um, start the discussion here um, with an opening input from all of you. Um, I would like to ask all the three of you for this input. Um, as you know, in the audience, we have um, we are addressing researchers from India and Germany who are interested in exploring opportunities in both the countries, as both the countries uh, have such a vast research and funding landscape. Um, and in India and Germany within itself, within both the countries, we have more than 40 programs which enable exchange of researchers. Um, this collective vast portfolio can be very confusing for some of the uh, researchers here. Could you give a short overview, uh, let's say two to three minutes each, uh, to the audience on the distinct profile of your institutions and the positions that your institution hold in the larger funding context. I would like to start with you, Mr. Stova, with the DAAD. Thank you very much, and uh, thank you very much for having me here today. A warm welcome from Bonn, from the DAD headquarters in Germany. Um, indeed, as you said, I mean, the, the German funding la landscape can be quite complex, even if you're inside Germany. And I think you have two of the most important agencies here, the DFG and the DAD. Humboldt Foundation might be another one that you've heard of. And uh, our missions, I think, are quite distinct. And at the same time, we work together closely. Um, the German Academic Exchange Service, the world's largest funding or organization for international exchange and for students and researchers. So basically, what we do is we uh, fund international exchange, academic uh, exchange, as the name suggests, between Germanys and countries abroad. We are a member institution of the German university, so basically the German universities are members of the DAD, and we've been around for 99 years, so please return next year for the big party, 100 years of DAD. Um, our first funding started in 1925. Our focus lies very much in supporting international activities of German higher education institutions with institutions abroad and, of course, of individual uh, internationalization um, um, proposals. Um, what makes us uh, unique maybe in this field, and I would even say maybe worldwide unique, is first of all, we are a member institution. Second of all, we provide funding in both directions, so incoming to Germany, but also from Germany outgoing into uh, countries, of course, including India. And uh, finally, we have an overseas network, a worldwide network of offices and lecturers abroad, and of course, including the New Delhi office, which is uh, for us an important way of staying in touch with the most important countries that, that we work with um, as a German institution. Our funding basically starts at student level, which is also a little bit uh, different from other um, organizations, all the way up to postdocs and established researchers and professors. We have two different funding structures. Uh, the first line, which I think we are most um, known for, is scholarships, so individual scholarships. Basically, you have an individual proposal. Uh, funding is allocated on an individual basis to your unique proposal. This is what we call individual funding. And the other line that we have is called project funding. In this line, a university an institution can apply for funding, which in our case always includes mobility uh, funds for a, a partnership with a university abroad. And of course, again, including India. Um, a third pillar, maybe, if you want to call it that, that we set up recently was advising and matchmaking events. Um, so you mentioned earlier in your introduction that the Kiwi, basically like the fruit, yeah, is uh, one of the new institutions that we have within the DAD. We pro provide uh, advice on how to cooperate between German universities and university partners abroad but also on larger themes which uh, concern higher education, maybe even on a worldwide basis. So to give you some examples of recent topics that we've had, um, research security, I think, is a very important topic at the uh, current time, legal frameworks for international collaboration and science diplomacy. That's just to give you some ideas. I think we will discuss a bit more uh, about the details in the coming few minutes, but um, I leave it at that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Strova. I will uh, take up some of these points later in our discussion. Um, I would like to ask Dr. Francisca Langer to give a short overview of the DFG. And also, thank you very much for inviting the DFG here to this event. I think it's it's a great showcase of our uh, yeah joint forces on how to mobilize Indo-German research collaboration. So the German Research Foundation and German Deutsche Forschungsgemeinschaft, DFG, is the largest funder to support fundamental research in all fields of science. And here I have to make 
right from the beginning, the distinction to the DAD, we are mainly focused on projects. So not that much mobility, although mobility is part in our in some of the projects, but mainly we are looking into project funding. Also, we are an association under German private law. So also all of the universities are members of our organization and also the research institutions are our members. We are also funded from the government independent from the political parties parties, and that gives us quite flexibility in regards to strategic funding and also on how to set up our funding instruments. Our programs in general range from initiation grants for international collaboration to research stipends to go abroad individual research grants to have research stays or research projects in Germany for up to three years, but also quite bigger consortia. So collaborative funding between universities or also to support PhD training, training at specific universities. So you see it's a wide variety of funding programs the DFG can offer the applicants from the German side. What is really important to know and also in contrast to the DAD, we need a PhD to be eligible to apply to us. So once you've finished your PhD at the university of whatever country, you would be eligible to apply for funding and then also to avail the funding in Germany. Um, also, what is quite interesting for, for a funding institutions is that all of our programs, of course, Asterix with some exceptions, are working in response mode. So we leave it in the hands of the researcher to come up with their ideas and then to approach us at any time throughout the year with any topic they, de they see deemed worthy and then see whether that could be funded. And that gives the researcher a lot of flexibility in regards when and what to do and then also with whom to do researches. A research because we also set no country priorities, so we don't have quota for certain countries. We don't have specific budget for certain countries, so everything is in competition with everything, but also everyone could be invited to any of these programs. And just to end uh, and, and basically close the gap uh, to the introduction of the DFG and to understand why a national funding agency, which we are, we are spending German taxpayers money in Germany. So why be even here in this Indo-German collaboration? We said that our goal to have internationalization as part of our uh, research effort. So all of our programs are open to international collaboration. We have several modules which could be integrated in any of our funding instruments so that we can allow the German research community to integrate the best and brilliant minds from all over the world and use that knowledge to yeah, broaden all of our yeah, knowledge from in, in all specific topics um, throughout research. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Dananga. It was a very broad uh, introduction considering so many diverse topics that are handled at both DAD and DFG. I would like to come now to Dr. Lalitha Pivi uh, with the IGSTC, which is a very unique instrument. We'll get into the details of some of the, the significance of the instrument a little bit later, uh, but just give us a gist of what the IGSTC is. Yes, please. Uh, good afternoon to this way for inviting me for giving an opportunity uh, dr dalita we we just um, losing your voice a little bit uh, could you please repeat what you said um moved away yes uh, good afternoon and thank you important uh, event meeting. Uh, my name is Lilita. I am the scientific officer at uh, Indo-German Science and Technology Center. Uh, uh, Indo-German Science and Technology Center was established in uh, 2010. We are very young, just uh, 13 year um, uh, completed, going to 14th year. And this is a joint initiative between government of India through Department of Science and Technology and government of Germany through the parallel ministry, Ministry of Education. of an DST campus in New Delhi and we have a parallel German office uh, at Bonn. Uh, the center is um, uh, um, you know, found uh, to facilitate and promote um, interaction between uh, researchers, scientists and industry personnel in science and technology areas between um, both these countries, India and Germany. And the 
per site. This is government um, uh, commitment. That means in the overall, it is 8 million euro per year. Um, Please in Could I get that PV? We were losing your voice and video a little bit. Uh, um, maybe maybe I'll remove the video then. Uh, yes, that's because, okay. Yes. But, um, Okay, uh, the, um, the IGSTC is set up uh, with a clear mandate, mission, and vision. And the uh, uh, intention is to support uh, Indo-German technology partnership uh, through um, uh, industrial uh, research programs and projects and support knowledge networks and joint knowledge pools through various modes, um, including public private partnership PPP modes and to nurture contact and interaction between young and mid-career researchers um, and scientists between both these countries and uh, to collaborate uh, to to facilitate Indo-German collaboration uh, between Indian and German researchers and uh, industry personnel. And also, as you know, the SNT landscape, there is very lot of parallels between the SNT um, um, landscape between India and Germany. And uh, uh, there have been uh, networking or collaboration between one to one. But with the formation of IGSTC, we, uh, we are able to facilitate this interaction from any level to any level. That means from a department to a university or to an um, agency to a research Institute. So I would like to mention the, that um, uh, why IGSTC is so important. This is the only one center that Germany has created with any other country outside uh, Germany. And for India also it is important because this is the one among the three bilateral centers that is um, uh, 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 before uh, that Indo-French Center and Indo-US Center. We do have programs and we fund, we support joint R&DI projects. We do um, support networking um, facility, capacity building and quick assistance through our various programs. So I will come to those details if, uh, uh, if necessary at a later stage. So that's all for now. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Lalita PV. Um, you also answered one of the questions that I was going to ask you later, but I have uh, some more questions. So, so uh, let me actually now start with the actual um, set of questions that, that I have for you. Um, and in the end, uh, for the audience, I encourage one more time, uh, if you have questions, please uh, drop them in the chat. And, and uh, I will take them up later during uh, the dedicated Q&A time, or I, I will uh, blend, them. blend them into my uh, discussions. Uh, right. So my first question uh, goes to Mr. Strobab. So DAD has been present in India for more than 60 years, has been running um, exchange programs for scientists um, since then. And um, for example, one of the bilateral uh, exchange program that runs with the CSIR group of institutions here. Uh, DAD also has hundreds of long-term and short-term mobility scholarship that it gives to researchers uh, every year to uh, mobility for mobility to Germany and else has also invested in the several, in the several co-funding schemes that have been running. Um, my question is why does India play, um, what role does India play in the overall funding strategy of the DAD? Thank you very much for the question. And I think the, the short answer is a very important role, but maybe I'll go into a bit more detail than that. Um, as you might know, uh, students from India and, and junior scholars from, from India are the largest group of international students in Germany. Uh, they recently overtook China, and they're now the most important international group at German universities. And also for us as the DAD, if we look at funding numbers for 2023, through DAD scholarships, we were able to fund close to 2,800 people from India to Germany. But in the other direction, and this is something we might talk about a little bit later, it was only 500. So it's very imbalanced and is, of course, our interest to get these numbers a bit more balanced and to also get more outgoings from German universities going to India. Um, and of course, this is also a matter of, of um, absolute numbers. Of course, India has a larger population, but also percentage-wise, these are not balanced numbers. 
Um, what we uh, offer as a DAD is a, is a broad spectrum, and uh, we're happy to report that the spectrum is basically, uh, every part of the spectrum is something that is also of in interest to India. So we basically have applications in most of these programs that we have, ranging from research scholarships over summer schools, internships, joint promotions, bilateral projects, as you already mentioned. Um, in general, I think it's important to keep in mind that what we do as a DAD is usually uh, not specific to a country. So most of the programs we have are offered worldwide, with the exception of very few bilateral programs. In that regard, it's similar to the DFG, and we, we do have quotas within larger regions, but most of the programs that you do see advertised are advertised for incomings from anywhere in the world. Um, in this case, of course, uh, um, the application numbers from India are high, which we are very happy about, and that also shows a good interest in, in Germany. With project fundings, it's comparable. Uh, we have larger project lines within project funding. Usually, the German university can apply. There's all, there always has to be an international partner. It's always about international um, exchange and mobility. And uh, we have a few programs where uh, we have strong connections to India, or met, where we even have partners in India, in India. You already mentioned the Departments of Science and Technology or the University Grants Commission. These are long-lasting trusted partners for us, and we're very happy to have these partners. So in this case, we also have bilateral programs. Um, what we do find in most cases is scholarships, but not positions at universities. We have one exception for postdocs. It's also possible in the prime program to get a position at a German university. Funding usually includes a, a mobility, uh, um, a subsidy, subsidy and a monthly scholarship rate and goes across academic levels. For us, I think it's very important to strengthen the relationships with India. It's very important uh, to, to keep this interest in Germany maintained and at the same time increase the interest in India, maybe among especially students in Germany. I think there's still room there. And of course, to work on topics which are very important on both sides. Um, um, these can be global topics like uh, um, sustainability issues, energy issues, but I think we can also learn a lot from India, for example, when it comes to academic startups. We recently had a seminar on this topic, and I think this is something where also your young students from Germany could very much profit from coming to India. So um, these are just a few topics I wanted to touch upon. But um, again, the short answer is very important and largest group of international students in Germany already. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, thank you for that answer. Um... I would like to, in the in the same you know portfolio of questions, I would like to move to uh, Dr. Langer. Um, Dr. Langer, DFG also has been quite active uh, with cooperation in India since decades. Um, has also established an office uh, in 2016, which is engaged in setting up um, you know further research funding schemes with partners such as DST, DBT, um, INSA, and several other research councils as well. Um, there was existing a lot of cooperation already. What drove the DFG to establishing an office um, in, in India? And how has the portfolio of the DFG developed um, in the last um, two decades? So thank you. So it was already brought up and I also pointed out from the beginning, we are keeping our funding programs quite open and therefore leave the scientists to approach us in regards to their interest. And in that way, we also got to know that from the German community, there's quite a big interest in the Indian research community. And that was from what I read and hear the main point why we have opened up an office. I wasn't uh, with the DFG at that point, but it uh, showcased that there are specific experts in the field, in specific fields of science in India, where German researchers wanted to uh, get a connection to. And of course, um, uh, Dr. Strova from the DAD pointed out there's a lot of youth coming into the research systems and future leaders in research are sitting in India and a big number of students are entering the universities and they are a great resource for German universities as of course students in Germany as well but also as future collaboration partners where we should network with and where we see um, a great potential to showcase the German research landscape, but also our programs to interact between to both the research system. But then on top of that, we see a great development in research performing institutions in India. And I think this was also a main factor uh, when the India office was established from the, DA, uh, from the DFG, that these research institutions could be and are already ideal partners to join hands to tackle complex research questions and to also be a host for German researchers to um, yeah, make experience that, that uh, experiments that might not be possible at some research institutions in Germany. And 
over the years, as you pointed out, we have seen strong connections between researchers one on one between the two countries. A lot of research projects have taken place. And as you said, they were funded by calls with DBT and DST and also the ICMR. Um, but we right now see that there's a rather an interest in more collaborative projects in more bigger consortia working together. Why that, that is why we have a little bit shifted um, away from the one on one calls um, to rather announcements where we allow for greater complex uh, strategy uh, funding strategies to be able to be co funded. And here I wanted to point out our program that has been opened up in 2022, the international research training groups, the IHG, which we could co fund now with DST and where there's a huge um, yeah, interest from the communities on both sides to engage together and make it possible that not only research is happening between the two countries, but also PhD education and basically nurturing the future leaders, the future um, yeah, people in, this, in these systems to build networks again and build on top the networks that have been forming over the past years. Thank you very much for that, uh, for that input. Um, I would like to briefly check in that our fourth speaker has joined in, Dr. Rajiv Kumar. Can you, uh, are you here in the meeting room? Can you yes. hear us? Yes, yes, I can hear. Uh, sorry, my camera is not working actually. I have tried. No problem. We can hear you clearly, so very warm welcome to the session. Uh, right. We started off with the first set of questions already, and uh, uh, I've already introduced you to the participants. Uh, so. If you're ready, I already have a question for you. Sure, sure, sure. Right. Right. Thank you very much. So we spoke of the IGSTC earlier and Dr. Lalita PV um, also, you know, introduced the, introduced the instrument in a way. Um, I would like to ask you as, as I mean, DST is also involved in the IGSTC. Um, I would like to ask you a question on the co-funding, uh, you know, co-funding portfolio. Uh, DST has been active in co-funding programs with Germany for a very long time, along with the DAD, it has 25 years of cooperation and 500 uh, plus projects. Um, what value does this year on your engagement um, with Germany bring in for the DST? Um, and why only co-funding programs with Germany or for okay. researchers exchange? Sure. So Germany is our one of the amongst top three partner countries in science and technology collaboration. And history goes around 1974, we signed MOU with the Germany. And then this year we are celebrating 50 years of successful Indo-German SNT cooperation. So our history is very old. And then top three countries, India trade and Germany as a partner, investment wise as well as the output wise. Uh, we have not only the funding co-funding programs like the IGSTC or some mobility program. We have partnership with all, particularly all almost German counterparts like the DART. So almost for the last 25 years, we have been supporting the mobility between the two countries. Then again with the DFG joint research, the new kind of program IRTG mentioned. We have also established the center of excellence, uh, taking the help of Max Planck Society. So several center of excellence have been established within India in the Indian shores. Then the two major programs we have joined, like the mega facility in the Germany and India is partnering. So DESI, where we send our Indian researchers to conduct the experiment at Petra 1, Petra 2, and 3. And then we are trying to have another version, next version also, and join beam line, synchrotron beam line there at Petra. The similarly, the FAIR program, which is under construction, but India is actively participating in that program also. And then for not only the co-funding, but the mobility of researcher is one of the important component of our bilateral cooperation between the two countries. Like the Alexander, Alexander Humboldt Foundation, we have been supporting about the frontier of engineers, where in 30 engineers, young engineers from both sides, they stayed together for three, four days, brainstorm discuss the interdisciplinary research areas and then come up with some great idea which we try to support push from both sides. So not matter of uh, co-funding, co but the other aspects are also available under our Indo-German SNT cooperation program. Thank you. Over to us. Thank you very much, Dr. Kumar, for that, uh, for that overview of all the activities that DST has in general with Germany. Um, 
I would like to move to the next set of questions that I have. So we had earlier today the opening panel of the Indo-German Research Day. Um, we started with a fireside chat discu discussion with uh, on shifting paradigms in international research cooperation. And uh, we mainly discussed as to what strategies can be employed to, uh, to see that there's a general um, and genuine equitable cooperation uh, between you know, uh, Global South, um, Global North, and how can we ensure that knowledge uh, produced from Global South is also valued um, and it's just not a one-way um, one way street. Um, in this context, uh, we've been speaking of uh, you know, a significant challenge that all the institutions face, which is the imbalance of uh, exchange of researchers uh, from Germany to India versus India to Germany. Um, what strategies as funding institutions can be implemented to increase the inflow um, for researchers from Germany to India? Um, the question is open to all of us. Um, I would like to um, start with the DAD. Thank you very much for this question. Um, I think we have to differentiate between different academic levels here. So I think for researchers, the frameworks are very different than for students. Um, for students, I think what we have realized also in other contexts uh, with the Global South, as you said, is uh, that for students, it makes it easier to go abroad to, con to countries that they might not have a direct association with or that they've never visited before if they go abroad as a larger group. So um, basically things that we work with or that we have also suggested to the ministries are uh, um, preparatory seminars. This is something we actually do on a regular basis as a DAD. Also return seminars, also making sure that we have structures like the um, India office, the New Delhi office, where students have a, a actual contact point in the country where they, um, you know, that they can turn to um, and where they're also part of a cohort or of a group. So I think for students, this makes things easier. Um, for researchers, also junior research, researchers, the frameworks are a little bit different. Um, I think, um, Dr. Langer, you pointed out a very important point earlier that many of these activities are no longer bilateral, but that they are part of multilateral networks. So if a researcher is part of a multilateral uh, structure or cluster, then they will necessarily also be in touch in most cases with um, researchers from the Global South, or at least from, from, from abroad, from other countries, and it will be easier for them to also access these structures. So I think working in clusters can definitely help here. And um, for researchers, of course, it's also the uh, availability of uh, um, resources, of laboratories, of excellent scientists abroad. And this is something that the Global South has to offer. I think in some cases, it's uh, a matter of making it more visible, but in other cases, it is already, it is already visible. And we have, um, depending on the subject area, we have subject areas where people are more mobile and people who are less mobile in other subject areas. So sometimes it's not just a problem facing the mobility with the Global South, but specific subject areas to make them more mobile in general. I mean, things that, that we do work with and that I think can, can work well um, is working with basically alumni or if you like uh, ambassadors, we do this abroad, but this is also something that can be done in Germany. So people that have already gone abroad that have a network there, basically advertising their network. We sometimes tell our scholarship holders that they are, um, if you want small alumni, uh, so, sorry, small ambassadors for Germany. The same is of course true also for students from India coming to Germany, they are ambassadors for India and they will uh, of course internationalize the campus of the German university where they are and maybe generate interest in India. So, um, in short, I think it depends on, on the level, on the subject area, but there are many things already happening. And I think um, if we look further along the timeline, um, this will successively grow with the, com the uh, cooperation, especially in, in multilateral projects. Thank you very much. And uh, these are the points we also discussed year on year with all the institutions together to see where we could also join forces and not that individual organizations uh, implement measures for this. Uh, but I would like to ask Dr. Langer for her input on the topic. Sure. So, yeah, we also have the same uh, problem. I would say that we that we see mainly travel from uh, Indian research for long term stays in, in Germany, but not the other way around. So although our programs allow for it, so we, we pushed it a lot with the flexibility of our programs. It's hardly used. Of course, if the subject needs it, if you have to have a long term field trip stay, yes, then it'll be used. But we see definitely on the level of postdoc and these junior research group leaders, there's a gap. There's a gap of people not really wanting or not being able to travel at that curious stage. And with our office abroad, of course, we try to be um, a first contact point to give a lot of information out to kind of um, ease in the mind in regards to what is needed to get in contact with the partner, to get to know the institutions, to know what is 
going to be happening in India, but still the, the flexibility of our programs allows a flexibility also for the researchers and we can't really push them into that direction. So it's still in the hands of the researchers. But still what, what I see in this activity here today in, in this really nice and, and well set up Indo-German uh, research day, we get our German information out. We give that to the audience here. We inform a lot of in, interested um, Indian researchers um, to get to know what could be done in Germany. And I see that there's um, a gap, a knowledge gap in the other way around. So at German universities, there's not that much knowledge about the Indian research landscape on how it developed over the year, on how excellent researchers are there and what great facilities could be used. So I think a, an activity like that, just vice versa, would help a lot in regards to the to bridging the gap and to help uh, people out there to yeah be a little bit more confident and go out into a collaboration with India in India. And then what I or what, what we as, as an office also try to do is, as the, the, the DAD colleague pointed out, use the ambassadors that are already in contact and let them know, bring your youngsters with you. Showcase them what could be done in the next years, because we all know the, these, the alumni, they are at basically mid to end of their career. So this network will not be there for a longer period of time. But if they would bring in um, their uh, colleagues that are currently getting into the postdoc in the individual phase, um, if they would um, get to know the Indian research landscape. And we've seen that a couple of times when we invited postdocs to have their own seminars and, and to engage, they were um, amazed on how good the communication was, how good the intellectual knowledge was. So I think there, there's a knowledge gap and this can in a way be bridged from the German side, but from the researcher side that they push their youngsters a little bit more, but also maybe from the Indian um, yeah, government side and to showcase and from the institution side to showcase what they can offer because there is a lot. Yeah, I agree uh, to your points and also from the DVE Han New Delhi and the DAD, we also try to do this um, and um, also more and more um, raising awareness of India, as we say in Germany, and also um, we try to do outreach. Um, speaking of outreach, um, I know IGSTC also very actively tries to promote their programs in Germany because there as well for, um, for the exchanges, there has been um, a lot of interest from the Indian side, of course, but um, the, to match then the interest from Germany. Um, what measures is then IGSTC taking, Dr. Dalitaki? Yes, uh, as uh, you all mentioned, there is a clear imbalance uh, in exchange uh, visible uh, in all our programs. So one of the reasons what we realized is the lack of awareness on SNT capabilities of India. We do have excellent institutions, research institutions and academic institutions, excellent industries, but whether this message is going to the um, prospective German scientists and industry people, uh, there is a doubt. So what we are um, right now do, do, doing is um, going ahead with uh, uh, different ways of uh, outreaches, uh, sometimes on uh, through online uh, and programs, then sometimes in person, and we are planning to do some uh, uh, embassy, Indian embassy um, uh, connected outreach activities soon. And our German colleagues uh, sitting in uh, Bonn, they are also trying to participate in, um, uh, in um, uh, events and uh, um, uh, present on IGSTC activities so that a um, larger um, scientific community or industry people will be getting more and more information. So to, to we also at IGSTC also we design some programs uh, which will um, which will enforce enforce German uh, researchers to move to India. So one such program is PECFAR that is paired early career fellowship in applied research uh, where a pair of two members one researcher from india one from germany they two together will have to submit a proposal and what we fund is uh, a fellowship for two months it can be to do a part of a um, small part of a project it can be exploratory visits in the host country so 
we insisted, we restricted that the pair members, one should be a, a German, German researcher, and one should be Indian researcher. Then only the application will be eligible. We have 12, uh, 20 awards per year. That means 20 Indian young researcher and 20 um, German young researcher can uh, get benefit out of this. So this is the third year after starting this program. First year, we had less... Uh, less applications with the German and Indian. Second year, it was improved. And this year, uh, results are not yet um, declared, but uh, um, we got large number of good applications. And I'm sure that uh, 20 awards can be made. And then yet another program, women-centric program, where the awardee only will get funding. So from India, we get large number of candidates. They have to just get a host um, acceptance from German academic or research. Um, um, facility. So it is easy for Indian um, applications, large number of applications as I mentioned, but there are very less number of German applicants. So that also we are trying to um, encourage or publicize through our own awardees, uh, Indian awardees, requesting them when you go to your host um, in Germany, please publish besides this program and encourage anyone female researchers from there to visit your laboratory or your um, institute so that we also we are trying word of mouth yes uh, different ways we are trying to uh, publicize thanks thanks a lot dr lalita for the um, for your inputs and uh, it's it's nice to know that the uh, applications for the peck fair also for the visor went up then from from germany for uh, you know in the consecutive years um I would move to Dr. Rajiv Kumar very briefly from a perspective uh, from DSC on this topic um, as to what can be done overall on a strategy level uh, to make, uh, you know, to make the inflow of researchers from Germany to India a bit better. So I fully agree that there is an imbalance in exchanges and mobility is very less from the Germany to India. Uh, during last three, four years, we had brainstorming meeting with different insurers like the IITs, the premier insurers, and we have suggested them to prepare a short capsule presenting their scientific infrastructure as well as the, the housing facility, what they can offer to the German researchers or any foreign researchers. So, because always the students or the researchers, they see first the comfort, comfort zone. So, they need to come out. And we need to offer them a proper accommodation, housing accommodation, the scientific infrastructure, and definitely they will because the science science is, has no boundary. So all German researchers they must be working with their foreign counterpart. So first is presenting the India as a scientific landscape in the German lab. So that's the important aspects, and we request all PIs those who have Indo-German collaboration when you visit there. At least for five to ten minutes presentation, you make a mock before your the counterpart, so that the other German students they can see and then they can understand the Indian ecosystem and plan their work here. One example I can give you, like the IRTG, when we launched our two years, the mandate of IRTG was to attract and balance the mobility between the both sides. So the Indian students would be going there. And similarly, we expect that German students would be coming to India and staying in Indian lab. So definitely they will boost. When five or six German students are coming here, working for six months, when they will go back, they will spread this, the comfort, they will spread that Indian landscape. They promote the Indian landscape. And definitely out of five, we can expect that 25 will come in the next batch or the under different program so that Another aspect, our embassy has recently started like the monthly webinar where they are inviting few Indian insurers who can present their scientific landscape, the work ideas, and then similarly, they can attract the German students to that way. Uh, another thing, promoting the Indian scientific missions. During recent three, four years, we have established like the cyber physical missions. And 25 Indian insurers, topmost Indian insurers have been given mandate to promote the cyber physical system area. So as part of international collaboration, we have given them freedom. Without coming to even DST, they, they can directly host the foreign students. So we are requesting them to invite the foreign students directly, host them for a few months. That funding already has been given to them. They need not to wait for any call or any dependent on any funding agency. So that kind of approach we adopted under our cyber physical system mission. Another mission we are 
launching already launched like the quantum science and technology mission. So the, under that mission also we have made provision inviting the foreign students to work here in Indian labs with a dedicated funding already upfront funding we have provided them. So that kind of approach I think will definitely help us and in the coming years we'll expect more German students coming to India. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's uh, very nice to know that there's this, um, so many measures being taken by also the offices uh, working together with DSC back in Germany to increase uh, increase the outreach and then inflow. And I see all of our institutions doing um, a lot in 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 you know from their own institutions. But I think a collective effort is needed, and we speak regularly about this. Um, so I suppose there will also be um, a discussion on this uh, following as we do every year, and then. Uh, more measures taken. So we we are also looking forward to that from the DVE Ranking Terry. Um, I will come to my last set of questions and then uh, we will go to the audience questions. So for the audience, just a note, I see there's a lot of uh, uh, interest in knowing information about individual programs or knowing about where you can get funding for your particular area of research um, and similar questions. I would suggest that uh, as the um, as the DAAD and the DFG have a slot for interactive sessions right after this panel, you take your questions uh, there from, uh, we will have represent Dr. Langa will do also a presentation from the DFG there. Um, and we also have colleagues from the DAD office uh, who will have a dedicated session for an hour for you. I suggest you take your questions there. Uh, Dr. Lalita PD already did a session on the IGSTC earlier and on the individual programs that uh, that that offer funding. Uh, we will also at the end of the event send out important links to everyone who's uh, registered for the event, so you will get more information on the individual uh, on your individual funding or research related questions. Um, as the time is short, we will not be able to take up all those questions here uh, in this discussion today. Um, moving on to the last question that I have is that um, we've been lately seen, seeing that worldwide there has been a cut in funding for research, uh, research mobility, generally reduced budgets for programs, or there's a stagnancy of budget or temporary freeze. Um, and on the other hand, we see we're speaking of more international collaboration. Uh, we are also um, this is also mentioned in the national SNT policies that we have. Uh, we should look more international and have more international affiliations. Um, so, what perspective do you um, what perspective do you think that the institution, the funding institutions, can um, have to address this situation? And um, are your institutions already readjusting their strategies and preparing for such future scenarios? Um, maybe let me go to uh, DFG first and then to DAD. Thank you. So, yes, definitely the funding situation will become more competitive because we see an increase in project costs on our side and definitely this will lead to a decrease in the funding rate. I mean, we already see that and we calculate that in, but here I have to say a really big but uh, the DFG for us, it seems that this will have no consequences so far for the international collaboration because this has also been from the beginning, an integral part of our um, normal research funding. And we have never made any specific budgets for international collaboration, so they can't be cut. So it will always be part of our funding instruments. I think in general funding rates will go down, but collaboration will stay a steady state. And already now we can say hardly any application that comes in does not have an international partner. So it's it's become as the, the standard to have an international collaboration in such a project. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Uh, then over to you, Mr. Shroga. What is the DAD strategy in terms of the funding? Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. And, and, and indeed, we um, just had talks, and of course, ongoing talks with the ministries with view of the next year. Um, I think it's no, no secret that um, the uh, Russian attack on Ukraine has uh, of course, an effect on, on prices here, on energy prices, on inflation, but also the availability of budgets um, combined with our current government's goal of um, no more deficit spending. So, of course, these are issues that we'll, uh, we'll have to tackle in the future. Um, 
there's several ways of, of, of dealing with this. Either you decrease the number of scholarships you can award, or you don't award, award scholarships worldwide anymore. Both is not ideal, both is not what we want. So I think our, our joint mission pretty much for everybody here, for everybody working is in, in academia, is to again and again highlight the importance of international collaboration for academia. Highlighting this towards uh, our policymakers, uh, ministries, but also the general public, raising awareness for the importance of international collaboration in solving problems which concern your everyday life, no matter if you're in academia or not. So, for example, the, the first COVID uh, mRNA uh, vaccine that was developed, this was an international collaboration. And um, there's many other examples where uh, science working together internationally can solve problems which are day-to-day -day problems for, for many people in the world, of course, and which are maybe even up-and-coming uh, problems which we need to tackle in advance. So I think raising the awareness, um, stressing the importance of international collaboration, um, talking about what you do uh, um, also outside of academia and showing how important it is, it is, this is a very important aspect because resources will become more limited, there will be more competition for these resources, and I think we have to make sure that the people uh, who makes who make these decisions um, know that this is uh, essential to um, very various aspects ranging from global problems over economic uh, um, uh, situations. Um, science is basically a, the foundation of everything. So I think this is a very important part of raising the awareness. Thank you very much. That uh, these were very nicely put uh, put answers for for us. Uh, I would like to take this question also to Dr. Rajiv Kumar, as DSD is engaged in, in international collaboration with several countries. Do you also have a strategy um, or do you also face similar situations in terms of budget freeze, reduced budgets, um, and what is DSD's uh, outlook on it? Thank you. So, fortunately, from, uh, from the Indian side, so far we have not faced any budget cut. Rather, we have increased the budget for science. And particularly for international cooperation, we have got the additional funding directly to the DST as well as we have been giving to the other shows. Yes, we received the request from few countries to adjust the program. So, since they have some shortage of funds, we have to mutually agree and define. But that way, instead of like the funding we earlier we gave full cost funding, everything mobility, research cost, equipment. So we optimize the funding and instead of giving the full cost, we try to give them the mobility one. So mobility is the one of the important aspects of our bilateral cooperation. So we sh they should not lose the linkages due to the fund crunch. So still they continue their research, utilizing their national funding from the different funding agency like the SCRV or DVTs funding or CSIR, they have internal funding for the issue. So we suggested them to utilize their national funding for doing the research, as well as they can take the funding from international cooperation programs and continue their research. So that way we came out. But yes, now the situation is improving. Even with the Germany also, we we didn't find any cut on that aspects. Like the number of proposals, what we funded four years back, the similar funding we have been providing for the inter-German cooperation right now also. Thank you very much. It's nice to know that there's no a uh, very strict cut that's happening and then programs are still running uh, with adjustment for the DSD. Um, I'm going to, at this point, take one question from the audience um, and my apologies to the others. Um, as I said, these are questions related to individual funding and you can take them. Um, you can interact with the representatives in the interactive sessions for those questions and we will also send more information. Um, but here's a particular question which uh, comes up often as we um, see that the funding for social or the uh, yeah, funding mobility options for social sciences comparatively are not so highlighted as for, for other subjects. So um, the question is why are, what are the short term mobility options available for senior academicians in social sciences? And can they directly apply for such opportunities or, uh, as in several cases, must they be just invited from German institutions? Um, Mr. Strova, would you be able to take that question in? Thank you very much. Well, in general, our, our basic programs are usually open to all academic disciplines. So um, I just posted the link to our website. You can also search by academic discipline on this database that, that I just posted the link to. And in most cases, um, it, the, the academic background that you have is not relevant on whether you can apply or not. Um, as mentioned earlier, we have two different funding schemes, so individual scholarships, 
as I mentioned, usually open to all disciplines. The uh, higher education projects that we fund, the international projects, these are usually administered through the German university. So in this case, if the German university has a partnership with your host university in India, then you would be able to go via this, scholar, uh, this, this um, project, but this would not be via an application to the DAD, but it would be via the actual project uh, PI, which would probably, there would probably be one in India and one in Germany. So this is a slightly different route. Um, but again, in most cases, uh, we not, do not uh, sort of say discriminate against social sciences. It's usually open to all disciplines. All right, thank you very much. Um, what about the DFG, Dr. Lange? basically the same so all fields of science are happy or can can uh, yeah approach us and apply for funding in addition to that we're currently setting up or kind of specifying a collaboration with the ICSSR for so with the Indian Council for Social Science Research so that a co-funding scheme could be um, bring could be brought more to the open public so far it has always been possible but not yet that publicly announced from the Indian side but we're currently working with the ICSSR together so that could be used more often from uh, both sides um, yeah so we hope we can open that in the next couple of months half a year I, I don't know yet but we're working on it to have more opportunities there okay thank you very much and uh, we wish that happens very soon um, now, before closing, I'm going to ask a, 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 a candid question to all of you that may may not be from the perspective of your institutions, but as um, all of you have been active in funding programs um, for several years. Um, what is your wish for one funding program for, let's say, for a, um, for a topic or for a certain level of researchers, for transfer, for startups, etc., which does not exist, but you would like to see in the next years? Um, let me start with IGSTC. Yes, uh, I would like to see some program, uh, even though it may not be in, within our mandate, a program where a startup from India can uh, link with a startup from. I think we ran into audio to collaborate. issues. Yes. Okay, but I, we got the we got the main point. What you wanted to see, hmm. uh, what you wanted to say. Thank you very much. Hmm. Um, uh, to Dr. Rajiv Kumar, the same question, very short and put. So instead of one, I, can I tell uh, two? One yes, is, please. Uh, connecting, like I'm taking up this Lalita's thing, like the small and medium enterprises, the connecting the SMEs from the both countries is the real challenge. And that I wish to connect them because they are the backbone of the economy of the both countries. So to connect the startups as well as the SMEs, that will give you Amazing result. The second is the connecting because for last several years we have been getting the request from the social scientists how to connect the social scientists to address our scientific problem. So that kind of program we need to have where the scientists as well as the social scientists can join hand and then address the scientific challenges. So that kind of two aspects. And I'm glad to inform that our Amsterdam National Research Fund. So they will have most likely mandate to accommodate the social scientists also for this program. And then once that ANRF is in place, we can try to find out some bilateral program connecting the German social scientists and Indian social scientists, addressing the scientific challenges of the two countries. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. I would like to add here uh, from the perspective of the DAD shortly, but from the India perspective, Dr. Uh, Mr. Stoba, um, that we have also been working actively to connect um, deep tech startups or let's say researchers who are interested in uh, taking their products to the market, uh, but not for market access, but more for international technology development and cooperation um, and for joint research from India and Germany. Um, we've spoken also to IGSTC about it and we hope that in the future we can uh, join hands here. And uh, as Dr. Rajiv Kumar, you mentioned the SMEs uh, from India and Germany, um, the, D, the DVE, DAD actively has been working uh, with Fraunhofer office in India to come up with a study on uh, SMEs and international cooperation for SMEs. So more for research cooperation between India and Germany. And uh, this paper will be out um, by end of this year. So I just wanted to announce this. And uh, now I go back to my question uh, to Dr. Langer and then uh, with Mr. Shrova, we can end the discussion. 
Thank you very much for giving me a little bit more time to think about it. But still, I, I, I have a feeling there's so many options out there, such a wide variety. And my wish would be streamlining that having a good portal where people can see what is offered because there's so many options. And I have a feeling there is a pod for every uh, top. So I, I, I think there is a lot of things out there. Maybe it would make sense to first have a look what is on the table, streamlining that, and then we can look for missing gaps. Thank you very much. And then over to you, Mr. Strober. I think these are excellent suggestions. I can't really add very much to that. I think bundling our resources to really find out what is missing, especially going into the field of transfer from academia to or from science to industry, um, as was mentioned by our Indian colleagues, I think this is also something that's uh, very important for the German market. I think the DWIH, as you mentioned, is already doing a lot in that matter. But maybe we have a little more funding to underline it. This would also help. Um, but I think streamlining is the sensible first step. Uh, thank you, Dr. Lange. Thank you very much for your input. Speaking of streamlining and collecting all the information, that is also one of the tasks of the DVR New Delhi. And we actively work on um, promoting this or putting it out to the public through our communication channels. And especially for funding, we're working on a portal which displays all the funding programs and cooperation projects between India and Germany, which would also be uh, live in the coming months. Um, with that announcement, I would like to thank all of you speakers. Thank you very much for your time. This was a very interesting and lively discussion. Um, and uh, thank you also to the audience uh, for taking part in your questions. Please take your questions to the interactive sessions for the DAD and the DFG in the next round. We have 12 institutions available for one hour for you to answer all your questions and present their offers and opportunities for you um, in India and Germany. Uh, the DVDV Han New Delhi will also have a presentation and I will meet you there shortly. Thank you very much. Uh, the interactive session will be the last session of the day. So I would also with this, thank you um, for participating in the third edition of the Indo-German Research Day and have a nice day from me uh, to all of you. Bye-bye.